Howdy folks, and welcome to Let's Play Might and Magic Book 2. This was released in 1988, both developed and published by New World Computing, and this is an RPG. This is probably, as far as I'm concerned, about as far back into RPGs as I will go without balking on some basic level. This game was reduced, reduced, ha, huh? this game was released on just about every platform that was available at the time. This is out on DOS, Amiga, this is on the Apple II, and I think there was even an SNES and a Genesis version. Uh, I have a copy of it for DOS, and so I have access to the manual, which back in the day with games like this, you were kind of required to use. I also have access to the Clue Book in print form, which we will probably be using to get us through the game a little bit more easily. Uh, before we get started here, this is just going to be character creation and some general outlines of how this Let's Play is going to function. It's going to be a little bit different from my usual ones. Uh, first, this is going to be on a completely random upload schedule. I will record this and post it as I kind of get the desire to do so. Video lengths are going to be all over the place due to this. Uh, and I'm going to be doing some off-screening, primarily with regards to leveling my party. This game is very grind-heavy, at least early on. Until you get access to some stuff that lets you grind really quickly, which we'll probably be employing just to speed things along. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any content off-screen. The only thing I'll be doing off-screen is things that you guys have already seen. I should say I'll not be doing any new content off-screen. So, for example, in the first town here, there's a quest you can do, and you can keep repeating it to gain experience points, and I'm probably going to grind that off-screen. Uh, anyways, I guess we're just gonna jump on in here. This game is, I would say, almost completely, actually I would say it is entirely keyboard driven, so... While I have a mouse cursor floating around, we really don't need it. I may refer the two things off screen as I need to if I want to Google around. Uh, also, this game does not have music, and it only has the most basic obnoxious with regards to sound effects. Uh, so I will be muting the game audio, and not this episode, but in further episodes I will be playing my own audio on top of the gameplay. Probably just old video game music and stuff if I had to guess. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is create our new characters. Uh, normally it comes with a selection of six pre-made characters, and then you have hirelings, which we actually don't have access to until we've unlocked them in game. Uh, this is a six person party to begin with, and it goes up to eight person with two hirelings, which you will want because later game gets kind of crazy. I've deleted all of the pre-made characters because we're going to make our own. So, we're going to start with, if I had to guess, I'd say that I'm going to go with the same group I used for my World of Zine Let's Play. So, let's let's get to rolling. Actually, might be able to work this, although his other stats are kind of trash. I would like at least... Like a 20 is nice, I believe a 20 is as high as a 20 or 21 is as high as you can go. I'm okay with like 18s and 19s. I certainly don't need maxed out sets. You really don't need to have crazy powerful characters to finish this game. They help in some ways, but they're certainly not necessary. This is actually... Man, that endurance. That endurance is so bad. Can I so Nope. He, he basically, since Swell's a paladin, that's who we're rolling here, he needs four stats that I would like in the high teens. Like, I would say four, at least 16 stats. So, this is going to be a while. I would love to be able to just hold down, you know, the reroll key. But that's not going to happen. This actually, I think, will work, though. Uh, let's see, intelligence for endurance, speed for accuracy, intellect for personality, and luck. I think I'll actually switch with endurance, and we'll go ahead and throw luck with personality. And that 13, I guess, can sit on speed, and he's a human, or he's a paladin, and he's a human, and he is good because, damn it, he's swell. He's just a swell guy. Alright, up next would be, I want to say Brunhilda, which was a half-orc knight. So honestly, this might be a good set right here. Because really, all she needs... No, she needs endurance, so she needs three good rolls. This, I think, will suffice. 
Yeah, give her some speed. And a trash tier personality. Actually, no, we'll switch her intellect down. That makes sense, because she's a half-orc. Half-orcs are dumb. She's neutral. She's female. Do we have enough letters? Do we even have enough letters? I'm amazed. All right, so third is Devon. Devon in this, I think, is probably going to be an archer, which, contrary to their name, is really more of like a knight sorcerer. They fight okay, and they eventually gain the ability to cast some magic, arcane spells specifically. Uh, archers have the special ability. Most care like almost every class in this game can use ranged weapons. However, you have to be in like the back row to use them. You have to not be engaged in melee, which I'll explain once we get to the the game proper. Um, archers are the exception to that. They can fire bows in melee. So I want to say he needs good intellect and accuracy specifically to be an archer. Ooh, there we go. A nice twenty. Well, here, we'll put it on his accuracy. Endurance to intellect. Yep, there you go. That there. Luck can go... There. I want him to be kind of fast. And we'll do that. There we go. That is an archer. He's a human. He is neutral. He is male. He is Devon. Up next is Chunk, our dwarf ninja. This was the game that introduced ninjas, I believe. In the original Might and Magic, there were only robbers. The differences between robbers and ninjas in this one specifically are that ninjas kind of suck when it comes to picking locks. By default, we'll be able to get around that. But they have the ability to critical hit, which will see him probably doing more damage than my front row melees. And these are actually really good stat rolls, so I think we're probably going to go with this. He needs a really high luck. He needs, so I think ninjas need speed. Can I switch those? I can. And I want to give him a good strength. Man, that endurance is trash tier, though. Can I switch that? No. What about personality? Ooh, the intellect? Oh, what do you need? Alright, so he needs a 13 speed, so, wow. I'm much more interested in, in him being able to survive, because he's going to actually be front row, even though I'm rolling him fourth. Oh, damn it, I just fucking re-rolled it because I'm an idiot. We're going to always... <sighs> oh, let's try this again. This is actually a fairly decent set here. We want his luck to be super high, that's what will affect his ability to pick locks and stuff. Uh, let's go ahead with an... Okay, so he needs high accuracy too. Can I do like that? There we go. 13 speed. Let's give the intellect, or the, the 17 to his might. Because like I said, he's going to be a melee fighter. So he is a ninja, he is a dwarf, he is neutral, he is a male. This is Chunk! Up next is Goldleaf, who is going to be our Elf Cleric. Essentially, we just need one really good roll. Which, there we go, and it even landed on personality. Now, we want her speed to be terrible. And the reason behind that is we want her to go last in the round, so that anybody that's injured, she can heal. Uh... And flip her might with her accuracy. And there we go. Elf. She is good aligned. She is female. And this is gold leaf. All right, so now for the hard one. This is gonna be Rove. I need a twenty, but I also need like as low as I can roll, cause he's got like the capped out intellect, and his endurance is like hot trash. So an eight is just not low enough. I would like. I'm like really more so excited towards getting the low a three. Man, that is, like, spectacular. It's a shame that his highest roll aside from it is a 17. I would like, I would, I would say I would like at least a 6 endurance. A 6 on the high end. Oh, come on, there's the 21. You jerks. They're taunting me. But Rove has to suck. 
He has to. It's part of the very... Seriously, twice now. It's part of the very fiber. This is a really good set of stats here. Holy shit. Oh. Okay, here we go. This I will work with. We will give him a 17... Or a 7 endurance, rather. Let's see, he can be quick. We do not want him to be strong. Yeah. That looks... Proper Rove to me. He is an elf. He is evil because he's Rove. All right, so I believe this is all our parody. Yes, so what we will do now is... All right, I think we view characters. No. We go to town. There we go. And so now we're in the inn in Middlegate, which is the first town. And as you can see, all we have here are, like, clubs. And it's just... Just really, really bad. Small clubs, small knives. Uh, so we will add them to the party, and we will exit. All right, so this is this is what you guys are going to be looking at a lot. I hope you can get through this. So let's take a step forward. The spirit of Korak proclaims: Fantastic adventure awaits you. Challenging quests abound, and battles innumerable must be fought. Do you have the might to emerge victorious? Only time will tell. And this is Might and Magic. And we will be digging in a little bit more deeply with Episode 1 next time. Until then...